Hey guys, welcome to a new episode of Experience RC. In this upload, I'm going to be um, opening and unboxing the flatbed semi-trailer for the Tamiya 114th scale tractor trucks. Um, this is one of my Christmas presents, so quite excited to um, to get this built. Uh, wanted this for quite a long time and um, was lucky enough to get one. So I thought, why not let's open it on camera, let's show you guys what's inside. Um, I'm sure a lot of you have seen it before, but there's a couple of things I saw inside which um which is a little pleasant surprise so i thought why not open it and show you all what's inside so first thing i noticed and i'm, I'm going to weigh this once it's built but it's you know it's actually really quite heavy um was very surprised to the point that i haven't finished the um the tam the grand hauler build yet but i'm probably going to be now putting an 80 turn motor in it because i just have a feeling that this standard can that comes in that isn't going to be able to pull the weight of this um, with some decent load on the back, uh, of course, which um, is what I plan to do. Uh, many trailers available, uh, but I wanted this one because it will help with the filming and it's just going to be, um, I think, a lot of fun. Um, but it does weigh a lot. I'll weigh it at the end, so just bear that in mind if you're thinking of putting this on one of your, um, on your tractors. Um, you're probably going to need a bit of a beefier motor than what's standard to pull it. Um, yeah, so let's get the box open. So nicely packaged inside, we've got the instruction manual, then in box number one we have got all the metal parts, so I've already broke the tape on this, just have a look, so parts bag A, wheel wrench and just a load of fixings, nuts, bolts, etc. Bag B, guys, got no idea what's in any of these, but it is all just metal hardware, rod ends, metal plate. Bag C, looks like it's got the parts in for the axles. We can see some leaf springs in there. Again, a ton more hardware, some thread locker. Bushings, Eclipse, all that kind of stuff. We've then got eight tyres. Typical Tamiya rock hard tyres. <laughs> and then got parts bag D. Which looks like it's a lot of, uh, of course you've got more hardware, but you've got all the chains that droop down the side of the trailer. You've got some chocks to block under the wheels, stop it rolling away for your scale uh, accessories effects if you like. And then we've got a few aluminium parts. Way for the moment. Moving on to what's in this big box. What we got? Plastic parts. So the box we just opened was metal parts. This one is plastic. So we've got all the rims for the wheels. Again, as I've just mentioned, they're plastic. Not sure why everything's in a bag and this isn't, but yeah, it, well, it is what it is. Some light lenses.
this bag looks like it contains the parts for um, the axles, the trailer legs, stands, whatever you call them. And then again, more plastic bits. So these are some of the rails that stick up across the uh, the trailer. Um, so you can shackle things to the adapters for them. Okay, no idea exactly what everything here is. Some bits you can make out, but uh, it'll be an interesting build. And I don't think it's going to take me too long to build. Um, because to be honest, there really isn't loads here. I found a few parts out of here. So we can see that this really is the length of the whole track uh, of the whole tractor trailer. Two of those pieces. We've got two of these as well. This blue stuff is just a protective film, so it's not scratched. Got one, two. We've got the wood pieces that actually go on the trailer bed itself. Let's give it a nice scale appearance. Two different types of wood. Quite nice. No real splinters on there, it's been planed well. And then the actual flat bed itself. It's a good size, should be able to get a lot of accessories on here once it's been built. And like I said, I am quite keen to get this weighed at the end because it's much heavier than I thought. And then it looks like here we've just got some decals. And without opening this, I have a feeling this is probably going to be like double-sided sticky tape or something to help keep all the uh, wooden laths fixed down. So guys, I'm going to build this off camera. Um, I don't think it would be the funniest thing for me to build uh, on camera. Let's face it, I'm just putting nuts and bolts together uh, on a few pieces of sheet and uh, bent aluminium. So once I've built this, I will come back and I'll show you um, the built trailer. I'll let you know how the build went. Um, and I'll see you soon. Okay guys, so it is now all assembled. Uh, I have to say, I absolutely love it. The wood is a really nice uh, effect, the way you get the uh, two uh, different types of uh, wood. Just makes it look really nice, some really nice clean lines. Um, I have done this over a couple of days, um, just been busy with family coming around, and I would probably say it's actually probably taken me about five or so hours. Um, if I'm honest, it's been a bit of a pain <laughs> to make, and it shouldn't be, because it's uh, it's relatively straightforward. Um, one thing I cannot stand with Tamiya is the instruction manual. I think, I don't think it's very clear. Um, I've been a little bit distracted, I suppose, when I've been building this. Obviously, family coming around, TV on, you know, it's Christmas, of course. Um, but I find in certain aspects of the instructions, there's just a lot going on. Um, I quickly find the page. So for example, um, on this section here, now this caused me a load of problems. So I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, right, I'm putting in all of the side supports. So these, did all that, was happy. Check this little diagram out to make sure I'm getting everything right. Spot on, moved on. Started putting the uh, the wooden mass down. However, when it come to putting on the lights on the back, that whole section with the mud flaps, I realized I'd missed that part out. So I couldn't actually fasten it to anything. So I had to then try and strip down the back without pulling up the wood. Uh, and then I, I just couldn't do it. So I had to take up some of the, uh, the wooden laths uh, in the middle. And I just feel like that's an incredibly important part and it could have been at least circled or highlighted. Um, I mean, to be fair, there's there's a lot that goes on on these pages. Um, 
I've never had uh, issues with instructions before with the other trucks. Maybe it's me, I'm not that experienced with Tamiya, um, but I, I, I don't like them at all, uh, if, if I'm honest. Um, my other issue that I had was all of the wooden laths went down perfectly. Apart from this side, you'll see this is a narrower piece than all of the rest. Because despite the fact that I got them all installed as tightly as possible, to make sure there's no gaps or anything like that, the end didn't leave enough for an, another piece. So I had to then start faffing around with a Stanley blade and try and score one of these pieces in half. Uh, now, luckily, I managed to do it. Um, however, I just shouldn't have had to. It should have just been... They should have just fit... Uh, if I'd known I was going to have an awkward little bit like that, I'd have probably maybe had it in the middle or something, so it could have been a, you know, a, bit, a bit more of a feature line, not on the end, so anybody with a bit of OCD on their trucks is not going to like that. Um, I simply don't have a choice. It might look fine now, but it was it was just a pain. Um, completely unnecessary. One other thing as well, which I feel, feel was... Um, well, it was incredibly frustrating, disappointing, and wasted a lot of time, is once you put all the wooden laths down in the instruction manual, it then tells you that if you want to make the, um, the cargo bay wider, you can put these little parts in, which bring these posts out. So there, add, add part D10 as shown when extra width is required. Well, I've already put the flipping wood down, now this wood is down by strips of double-sided tape across some of the structural beams across. So again, after already having to take it off for the back, I had to take it off again. Well, I had to take off the side strips so I could then remove the nuts to add these on. Incredibly frustrating when it could have been on the page where I'm putting these on just, and just to say, you know, if, it, if extra width is required, install this part number. Not right at the end when you've almost flipping finished it. Um, I was annoyed it's probably took me another two hours just to strip this off put them all on um, and when I'm trying to fasten the chain on if I can zoom in so when I'm trying to fasten the chain on with those little screws really really frustrating when you're trying to um, well, the little bolts, sorry. So really frustrating when you're trying to put a new bolt through a piece of plastic that doesn't have thread. You should get threaded bolts, really, to help. Well, thread starting bolts, sorry, to help you put them in. Because they've taken me about an hour, and there's 10 of them. Um, it's just little things like that which, which made this quite infuriating. 90% of it went together well. But because of a lack of attention to detail uh, in the instruction manual, I mean, and this is a very old design. This is a, you know, it's been built by thousands and thousands and thousands of people. Um, any issues should have been rectified by now. Um, so that was just really annoying. I mean, it took a lot longer than it needed to. I'm over the moon with it. I love it now. It's finished. I'm really happy with it. But there are a few issues with it, which for something which is quite old in the market, I don't feel like we should. If I pull it round, so most of the wheels are fine, but a couple of them, if I can find them now. So that one, if you push it in at all, it actually catches, and I believe it's catching on the um, part of the suspension. Now again, it, it shouldn't be, the tyres are on properly. Um, so what I'm going to have to do is pull the wheels off again now and add a washer after the hex just to push the wheels out a little bit further. Um, we've already got bushings in there, so we haven't got bearings. So there is already going to be a little bit more friction than what is necessary. doesn't really matter. I'm probably going to be throwing an 80-turn motor in the uh, Grand Hauler anyway. But it's just little things like this. It, it shouldn't be built so close where there's a possibility that they can rub. I mean, two out of the four rub. I have built them properly. A um, little bit disappointing. However, what I will say um, is the suspension is fantastic on this. If I just drop um, my camera for a second. Sorry, bear with me. Ah. 
compared to the Grand Hauler, this has got absolutely tons of suspension. And it's very smooth. The shocks, as simple as they are, went together very well. If I pick the trailer up at all, you have got a fair bit of movement, really, considering what this is. But straight away doing that, I can feel that the wheel is now rubbing on the suspension components. That's actually giving it a lot of friction. So once I've sorted that, it'll be absolutely brilliant. The design underneath. For the legs, uh, he's really clever. Didn't realize it would actually do this. Um, so at the moment they're extended. So what happens is when you back the truck up and the fifth wheel catches on, it will hit this and the legs then retract. I feel like that's really nifty. I quite like that. Um, I'm not really planning on spending too much on this whole, this truck, this build, with regards to all the little electronic accessories and the automatic legs and stuff. Um, so I quite like that. That, that, that was good. One thing I do wish they could have done, however, is when you've got to set the legs, you've got to do it manually, which is absolutely fine. But I'm pretty sure you could have found a way to do them both at once. I mean, we, we could have had a little leg across there or something, rather than just having to do it um, twice. Could be a bit fiddly when you're actually trying to play with it. Neither here nor there, that's not a problem with it. That's just something I wish it would have, um, or would have had rather. But other than now popping on the decals, I'm happy with it. I just wish it would have been a smoother build. It's taken way too long. Um, I've been, I mean, I've built entire trucks um, with many less problems than, than this. Nonetheless, guys, absolutely love it. I'll be getting on the hauler very soon. It's I'm almost finished with the body on that. Um, like I said, I've gone through a few things. I've had to put that build on hold, but the weather has gone really uh, crap for the last few months. It's pretty much rained every day and it's gone very cold. So I can't f finish off the body with the spray paints and stuff because um, there's a chance it could ruin it just because it's so cold and can't spray in the cold. So it is body to finish. It's gearbox to do, link everything up, all little accessories, electronics, and then I'll be running. Um, it's the build I'm focusing on now, so hopefully it's not gonna take me too much longer. Um, a big thanks for watching, guys. I hope you had a lovely Christmas. Um, I wish you all a happy new year. So I know in the comments below, if you get anything cool for Christmas, let me know. I've got a few more surprises coming. Um, enjoy the holidays, guys. I'll catch you on the next episode of Experience RC.